Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle and I am the owner of Lily Rose Craft Room. And I'm back with a new video. I'm back with a new passion and a new hair color. <laughs> so I recently started getting into rhinestones. We now have rhinestones in my shop, if you guys didn't already know. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create this beautiful focus, this beautiful tumbler. I'm going to be using Moonlight Rhinestones for my shop. And remember, I am still a beginner. I'm still learning, but I had a few tricks and tips that I wanted to share with you guys. So let's get right onto the video. Okay, so for the sake of this video not being too long, I'm going to be using the 16 ounce acrylic Starbucks cup and this is the grande size. So we're going to start with step one. Step one is prepping your tumbler. So we're going to be sanding this acrylic tumbler. So what I like to do is take out the ring from the lid. That way when you sand it, you're going to get dust everywhere. And if dust, dust gets inside, it makes it easier to clean when you don't got the, the silicone ring inside. So that's what I'm doing. Save it because you don't want to lose it. You need it afterwards. Um, I'm going to be using the sandpaper. It's 120 grit. And you're just going to scratch it all up so the glue can adhere well to the cup. Once the lid is all sanded up, put it to the side and we're going to start the tumbler. So I should have covered the logo with a piece of vinyl or tape, but I didn't. Um, that's why I was being very, very careful around the logo. But if you plan on covering the logo, you can go ahead and scratch that up. Um, I do end up putting a piece of vinyl after the fact that I sanded it. Um, that way I don't get any paint on it. So um, yeah, go ahead and sand up all that cup, get it nice and scratched, and then uh, we'll move on to painting the cup. And just so you know, we're gonna have so many time lapses in this video just to keep this video short, um, because if I don't do any time lapses, this, hour, this video is gonna be hours and hours long, and no one wants to sit through hours. I also sand the bottom of the cup because we're going to be putting epoxy there later on. So get that also nice and scratched up, that way the epoxy can adhere to the acrylic. So after we have it sanded, we're going to clean it up with alcohol. So I sprayed some alcohol on it just to clean up all the acrylic dust. I do clean it two times just to make sure everything is off the cup, any oils from my hand or any dust from the sandpaper, the acrylic. So go ahead and do the lid also, and then we'll be moving on to the next step. All right, so now next step is I'm gonna be putting a piece of vinyl over the logo because now I'm gonna paint the base and I don't wanna get any paint on the logo. So I'm just gonna put a piece of vinyl and with my X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut around it. And it doesn't have to be like super, super, you know, straight. Once you put the rhinestones over it, it's gonna, it's gonna be fine. You're not gonna be able to see any like um, jagged edges. You'll be good. All right, moving on to the next step. I'm gonna paint my cup with some acrylic paint and this one is from Craftsmart. I got it at Michael's and I think they're like a dollar something. So I have a whole bunch of different colors so you want to choose a color that's closest that close matches your um, your stone because when you when you rhinestone a cup you're gonna have some gaps and you don't want it to look like super obvious and this is a step in my opinion you should not skip because it's gonna look weird when you have say you got a pink rhinestone cup and it looks super pretty but when you put some coffee inside or some soda, you see black or brown underneath. So you, now you have pink and like black gaps. So it's gonna look weird. So don't skip this step. It's very, very important. So I, I like to give it two coats. You only need one because it doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna cover it with the rhinestone anyways. 
but I like things to look like, you know, semi-perfect. So I like to give it two coats of the acrylic paint, let them dry in between, and then we'll move on to the next step. Be careful to paint only where the paint needs to go, which is on the top and on the edges. And if you think you're gonna be messy about it, you could put some tape around like the bottom part, that way you don't get any paint on it. Moving on to the next step, after your acrylic paint is completely dry, you wanna seal the cup with some dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And the reason why it has to be the dishwasher safe Mod Podge and not the regular one is because a dishwasher safe Mod Podge is waterproof. And the regular one is not waterproof. So you don't want your acrylic paint to start chipping off over time as you wash the cup. So use a dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I like to take a brush and just paint over the cup and you don't want to do it too too thin and not too thick. So a nice semi thick line or semi thick layer would be good. So do that all over the cup and on the lid where you painted it. Once your Mod Podge is completely dry, you want to take off the logo. You can take it off before, but if you take it off after, make sure you have your X-Acto knife to just kind of um, make your little cut crease around it because if you pull off the sticker, you're going to probably pull off the paint too. So go ahead and cut around it so your paint doesn't come off. Or you could just take off the sticker while the Mod Podge is wet, like what I should have done, but I didn't. But either way, the sticker comes off at the end. So for this video, the glue that we're going to be using is Liquid Fusion. And I put it into this little squeeze bottle because it comes out really nicely and it doesn't get stuck so often. So if you don't already know, we've added rhinestones to our shop now. So we're going to be using this stone for the video. It's called Moonlight and it's a glass stone. And it's also a color shifting stone. So it has some purple tones to it and some blue tones to it. And we're going to be using three different sizes. It's going to be SS20, SS16, and SS10. So it sizes three, four, five in the millimeters. So now we're getting to the fun part. We're going to start blinging. So the very first line is called the foundation line. And this line is very, very important because this is the line that's going to keep your rhinestones straight. So you're going to put your line of glue and then go ahead and put your rhinestones. And once you reach the end of the glue, you're going to flip the cup upside down. And with the other side of the wax picker, you're gonna push the stones down. That way you're getting a really nice straight line. So you're gonna keep making your lines and put your stones and flip it over and then do the exact same thing over and over. So blinging is very, very repetitive. So that's why you're gonna see a lot of time lapses because it's basically the same thing over and over again. So now we got our foundation line nice and straight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that fully dry probably like 10 to 20 minutes. That way when we're doing the next rows, when you push the stone down, those are not gonna be shifting around. So while I wait for the top line to dry, this is the time where I like to do the rhinestones around the logo. So you're just gonna make a line probably like halfway through and then start putting the stones. And then after you're done placing them with the other side of your wax picker, you want to go ahead and straighten up the circle. I don't think I mentioned the very important thing, but the size that I'm using is a SS20, 
or the 5 mm size so I'm gonna be using that size stone and then the the other size like the 3 and the 4 mm's are gonna be used as fillers so the fillers are only used when that 5 does not fit the method that I'm using is the honeycomb method so what that means is I'm placing a stone right in between the two stones under under so it could make like a honeycomb pattern but with a tapered cup like this it's gonna be hard to maintain that honeycomb so you're gonna have to do your very best to try to make it as close as possible so sometimes you're gonna have to be sneaking in a smaller stone to make it work and tapered meaning the top goes smaller towards the bottom it's not a straight cup so you're just gonna keep doing this all over the cup round and round so I'm just gonna start skipping um, because I'm pretty sure you get the picture by now or if you don't please please leave me some questions in the comments and I will be happy to answer them so as you place these stones remember to use the other side of your wax picker to push them down and these cups take hours and hours to make so this is why people charge not cheap for these cups especially if they're glass the stones cost more so if you plan on selling these make sure you're charging your time and the product as well know your worth and never be apologetic about your prices because only you know how long it takes to make these cups And also, FYI, I am not a professional blinger. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm learning as I go. I'm learning as we speak. And um, it's something that I'm really passionate about. It's really therapeutical and it's just so fun for me. So anything that I'm learning, I'm going to share with you guys. But if you know you do something that works for you, then do it that way. So once you start getting to the top of the logo right there, it starts to become a little more tricky because you gotta use the other stones and just basically fit it like a puzzle piece. So whatever fits, place it there. And don't try to like shove it in there if it doesn't fit because you're gonna mess up the other stones. It's gonna be like a domino effect. If you shift one stone by like forcing it, it's gonna lift up a few more other stones so just be aware of that and when you're purchasing rhinestones it's always good to purchase the other size in that color because you never know when you're gonna need them you're not always gonna use the same size because just like here I use all three sizes the three four and the five because sometimes the 5 mm won't fit or the 4 mm won't fit and once you're doing the rhinestones like around the logo, just everything to do with the logo, it's hard. Like you really got to make the stones fit like a puzzle. And also you have to remember to keep the line straight because you need to have them meet up. Like when you go down the cup after the logo, you have to make the lines meet up together. So that's also another thing you got to keep in mind. So it's you got to strategically place these rhinestones. So I wanted to slow things down here because it starts to get tricky again. 
um, trying to get those two lines to meet up in the middle. So I use a smaller stone right above those stones that I'm placing right there under those stones. Um, I use a size smaller stone just to keep that line straight. So, you know, basically everything is just like a puzzle piece. Put the stones where they fit in. If you're just barely blinging for the first time, I highly suggest you use a straight tumbler because you can easily do a honeycomb on that and you don't have to put filler stones so often. So if you made a tumbler like this and you were like, oh hell no, I'm never making one ever again. It's because it could be really challenging. Go get a straight tumbler and try it again. Give it another chance and I promise you'll like it. And something I noticed when I was making this video is that I was having to put a lot of the smaller size stones than I usually do. And I don't know, for some reason I just wanted to start from the top and then go to the bottom. But I noticed from experience because I've done like a couple of these cups is when I start from the bottom up, I don't have to use as much of the filler stones and it just fits more perfectly like that. But I mean, I don't know why I wanted to start from the top, but um, my opinion is start from the bottom because it just makes things fit better. And like I said, I am not an expert. I am learning also, I'm learning with you guys. So if you guys have any tips or suggestions, I would love to hear them in the comments below. And if you have any questions, I would do my best to answer your questions. And once I get to like almost the bottom of the cup, I like to put my name on the cup. And I got these name tags from an Etsy shop. It's called A Touch of You by Jackie. And she was nice enough to give me a code for you guys for 10% off. It's Lily Rose. So when you go on her Etsy shop, use the discount code Lily Rose and you get 10% off these little name tags with your name, obviously. <laughs> I will put the code and the link on the description below so you guys don't have any trouble finding it. And these go on just exactly how the rhinestones do. So I put the same glue and I'm just gonna put a larger amount because that gem is bigger. And you just slap it right on. And once I put it on, I like to give it a little wiggle, just move it around a little bit, make sure that glue goes all over the gem. That way it's nice and secure. I got a little wax on it, but it's okay. You're gonna wash the cup anyways after, so any wax residue will come off the cup later. So once I put that name tag gem, I like to let it sit and dry for a little bit. That way it's not shifting around. So while I let that dry, I'm gonna start on the lid. So with the lid, I like to start on the outer part first and then I'll do the top after. So on the outer side, I'm using the, ten, the, the 5 mm's or the SS20's and you're gonna just do that all the way around and then you'll move on to the top. And I also wanna mention, once you're done placing all the stones around, take the end of your wax picker and just make sure the line is straight. Once you start working on the top, you can work in small batches because this glue does dry fast. So work like half lines at a time. I really love this glue because it's clear and it's also really easy to use. Another glue that I really like using is called Gem Tack. And the only downfall of that one is that it does get kind of messy. Even though the color is white, it does dry clear. But like when it's wet and you're putting your stones together and the glue is kind of like coming above the stone, it does kind of get messy and it gets kind of hard to see like where you're placing your stones. Although that is a really, really good um, glue, I really prefer using this clear one because you can see you can see through it. And there's another glue that I, I like to use. Well, it's more of an epoxy. It's called Bob Smith 30 Minute Cure. And I could bling a whole lid with that 30 Minute Cure. You just lather the whole thing with the epoxy and just keep blinging and you don't have to stop to keep putting on lines but that's more of an advanced glue so um i will do 
a video of that later on just to show you guys how to use it. So doing this lid, it's not really a honeycomb method because it's a circle. So it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. So I did use the fives all around the top. I did, I think I added like one four just because to close a circle, the five wouldn't fit. So I just put a four. So those are the only times I put a four on the lid. And for the inner, inner part of the circle, the last row, I did put size three because the fives or the fours didn't fit. So I was pushing a couple stones back here and there, but just be careful when you're pushing some stones back, be careful to make sure that other stones are not shifting or lifting up. All right, so we're almost to the end of the cup. So when you're putting the rhinestones around that little gem, like again, with the logo, you gotta piece the puzzles together, put a three, put a four, just make it cleanly fit. Um, I'm just going to fast forward to the last line because we're almost there, we're almost done. And we are on the last line, woo -hoo! Okay, so I was able to finish off the last of the cup with the fives. So, I don't know, sometimes when you get to the end, you gotta use like a different size for the bottom, which is okay, but I'm happy I got to fit the fives on there. So, we're done, but we're not done done. Next, we're gonna have to glitter the butt, and I'll show you what that means when I'm done with this. Okay, so you remember at the beginning where we sanded the bottom of the cup? This is when we're gonna use it now. So I mix my favorite epoxy, Illumilite Quick Coat Epoxy. I use um, five of A, part A, and five of part B. Some people like to use the UV resin, but I'm not really a fan of the UV resin. Um, I prefer just sticking to what I know. So like I said, I use Illumilite, Quick coat epoxy mix that very good make sure there's no fogginess it's got to be clear um, once you have that mixed I'm gonna mix in a glitter that matches the rhinestones so I'm gonna be using diamond dust this is a fine glitter and then I'm also gonna be mixing glitz and that is a chunky glitter so I'm gonna mix that into my epoxy and mix it up and then I'm gonna pour it to the bottom. Make sure you mix it really good. You wanna make sure all the glitter is coated with epoxy. And I like to put a generous amount of glitter, that way the bottom is just super sparkly. So this epoxy is gonna be thick and that's okay. So mix that all in and just pour it on the bottom of the cup. And I had mixed 10 milliliters, so it was five of part A and five of part B, and I didn't use the whole thing. I don't wanna fill it up to the top top, I just want it to be sitting just under the rim. You don't wanna overflow it, there's no need to overflow it. And another thing you also wanna make sure that it is level, because if it's not level, and there's a little bit more on the other side. When you put the cup down, it's gonna be wobbly. So make sure your table is level. After the cup has been sitting for a couple minutes, I like to give it a quick pass with my torch just to pop any micro bubbles that float up to the top. Just quick, don't touch the epoxy with the flame and just do it a quick pass. And now we are officially done. You let that dry for a couple hours and you're done. Here is the finished look. Look at that shine, the bling bling. So we are done with the video. If you found this video helpful, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you have any video suggestions that you'd like me to do, please let me know. Thanks for watching guys. See you on the next one.